For week four, we'll explore probability. For part one, we're going to discuss some basic vocabulary. Um, a probability experiment is an action in which results, also called outcomes, are obtained. A sample point, it's also called a simple event, is a single possible outcome. A sample space is a collection of all sample points in, of a probability experiment. And an event is a, is a subset of the sample space, or just a group of sample points. Okay, for example, as part of a game, you roll a six-sided die. Um, you win the game if you roll an even number. Let's say you roll a four. Let's identify each of the elements. So the probability experiment is going to be rolling the die. The sample space will be our possible outcomes, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Our event is rolling an even number, so that would include the numbers two, four, and six. And then our outcome is a four, because that's what we rolled. So there are three basic types of probability. Um, there are theoretical probabilities, empirical probabilities, and subjective probabilities. And even though we're going to treat these the same in terms of the calculations we'll do with them, um, how they are actually calculated is different. Um, no matter how we calculate the probability, we're going to use the symbol P of E to indicate that we want to find the probability of that event E. If you've uh, taken a class like Intermediate Algebra, you've learned function notation before. Um, remember f of x? This is p of e. It's, it's a function notation. And if you haven't seen it before, just realize that it's not p times e. We're actually saying the probability of event e. Events are typically capital letters, but really you can call them anything you want. Um, probabilities can be expressed as a fraction, like 1 half. It could be expressed as a decimal like 0.5, or as a percentage, like 50%. Um, in the real world, most people use either fractions or percentages, so they'll say something like, instead of 1 half, they might say 1 out of 2, or they might say percentages, 50%. Very rarely in the real world do you see people express probabilities as a decimal, like 0.5, but they're very useful for our purposes for calculations. So talking about theoretical probabilities, a theoretical probability is a probability calculated using theory, your knowledge on how an experiment will work. Like tossing a coin, you know that each outcome, a head or tail, is equally likely. Rolling a die, you know that you die can come up one, two, three, four, five, or six, if it's a six-sided die, and each outcome is equally likely. So we can use that to calculate probabilities. So if each sample point is equally likely, which is really how you should design your sample points, then the probability of, exper of, uh, of event E is the number of ways you can get event E divided by the total number of outcomes or possible outcomes. Um, for example, what is the probability of rolling an even number when rolling a six-sided die? Well, there are three ways to get an even number, and there are six total possibilities. So our probability should be three out of six, or one over two, one half. And again, you can express it as a fraction, one half, or as a decimal, 0.5, or as a percentage, 50%. Um, if, you're not, uh, if you don't quite remember how to convert a number to a percentage, you just look at it in its decimal form, the 0.5, and move the decimal place over two spots. Multiply it by 100%, and that's how you convert a number to a percentage. An empirical probability is a probability that's based on data. Um, earlier, we actually did empirical probabilities, but we called them relative frequencies. To calculate a relative frequency, or an empirical probability, you just take the ratio of the frequency of the event occurring over the sample size. So f over n. Um, there are several ways when you're looking at empirical probabilities, you can look at it as a probability of the event occurring if you randomly select a sample point, or you could look at it as the proportion of sample points that satisfy um, your event. For example, 
let's say we have a bag of M&Ms and it contains four red, three green, two yellow, three brown, four blue, and one orange. What's the probability of getting a red or a green M&M if you randomly select an M&M from the bag? So there are seven M&Ms that are either red or green and 17 M&Ms in this bag. Hence, there, the probability of getting a red or a green M&M would be 7 out of 17. Subjective probabilities um, are pretty common. They're an interesting phenomenon. These are probabilities that are really just educated guesses or result from unfounded sources. In other words, they're made up. Some examples might include if you go to a doctor and he says, oh, there's a 98% chance he'll recover. He's really just making that up. He doesn't know for sure. I mean, it's an educated guess, don't get me wrong, but it's really just a guess. It's not based on hard data. Um, a frequent um, In social studies, a frequent uh, statistic that's often quoted is um, women control 80% of household spending. Well, that's a very interesting statistic, but nobody actually knows where it comes from. People just, it's been passed around from person to person, from paper to paper so often that really nobody even knows if it's even true anymore. And then um, my favorite example, 73.2% of statistics are made up on the spot. Okay, that was my attempt at a bad joke. Um, this is actually an old statistics joke, but it's an example of a subjective probability because I actually made up that 73.2%. Um, that's the joke. No matter what type of probability you use, you have to consider what people call GIGO. And this is not a stats term. This is just a general life term. If you put in garbage, you're going to get garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. So with subjective probabilities, you have to be careful with that because you can do the most amazing analysis, but if you started off with numbers where you don't really know the source of the data or you just made it up, it doesn't matter how great of an analysis you did. Your analysis, your results are not going to be reliable. Okay, um, just some basic probability rules. All probabilities must be between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. It can be 0, it can be 1. If you're talking about percentages, it would be 0% to 100%. Um, probabilities that are close to 1 are less likely. Probabilities that are close to 1 are more likely. Um, a probability of 0 means that the event is impossible, or if we're talking about empirical probabilities, it just hasn't happened. Um, a probability of 1 means that the event is certain to happen, or if we're talking again about empirical probabilities, it just means it's always happened. Um, one other thing to note is that the sum of all probabilities of each sample point in the sample space must total 1. In other words, we must include everything.